everybody. So obviously I'm not standing in uh, my usual corner with a corset on and the reason for that is I uh, fell down a flight of stairs yesterday. Nothing really dramatic about it. Um, I was first thing in the morning I was going downstairs to uh, let Tibby out to do her morning duties. Uh, the pajama pants I was wearing were a little bit on the long side and I sort of slipped and tripped over them and uh, down I went. So uh, I went to the doctor and I'm pretty bummed and bruised and honestly I don't know how this fall is going to affect my video upload schedule because the way that I fell I landed very hard on one of the steps on my side uh, right in the area where I cinch and it's very badly bruised in this area so uh, I can't wear a corset right now I don't want to wear a corset until I know that I'm fully healed uh, so I can't uh, review any corsets at the moment unless I model it on the mannequin but I know that I prefer and I think you guys prefer when I uh, model the corsets on myself so that you know how it will look on a real body as opposed to just a hard mannequin. So this might result in my taking a week or two off for videos or uh, I might put up a couple of videos that don't require me to wear a corset or anything. But that's just the way things go, I guess. And, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling apologetic about it because, you know, the fall was an accident and the result is, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the reason that I'm saying this is that uh, a couple of years ago there was one other situation where uh, I couldn't wear a corset for several weeks. Some of you might remember if you stayed with me for that long. Uh, I had a case of bronchitis uh, that, once again, it wasn't brought on by uh, anything in particular. Corsets weren't the cause of it. I've had bronchitis on a regular basis ever since I was a little kid. And, uh, you know, I told people I was not going to wear a corset while I had any sort of lung or chest infection um, because I want to be able to uh, have the ability to cough up anything that needs to be coughed up. Um, and <laughs> you might hear my dog uh, snoring, but, but around that time I had made a video called uh, Corseting for Yourself. Uh, the fact that you have to enjoy the process, it has to be for you. Uh, because if you are doing the corset thing to please anybody else, it's not likely going to last. And um, you have to be able to truly enjoy wearing a corset in order to waist train effectively. Uh, if you wake up every day and you absolutely dread the thought of putting on your corset that day or any particular day, then waist training might not be the thing for you. I know a ton of people go onto the internet and they, they ask what's the best uh, healthy diet for me, uh, whether paleo or, or pritikin or raw food or this or that, and the best healthy diet is the one that you're going to follow. Uh, same with any sort of fitness plan. The best exercise for you is the one that uh, you will follow on a regular basis, one that you enjoy and that reaps more uh, benefits for you than it does uh, injury or dread or uh, resentment. So that was the theme of uh, that video a couple of years ago and you can watch it like somewhere up here, wherever I'm going to link it. Um, however, today I want to sort of turn that around because I have a lot of people asking me, um, how long after an injury can I wear my corset again? And it really depends on the injury, it depends on you and your medical history, and it depends on what your doctor says. So uh, whenever somebody says, you know, I cracked my ribs three months ago, six months ago, a year ago, can I start wearing a corset uh, either again or for the first time, I'm just like, check with your doctor, seriously. Uh, some other questions people have asked me, uh, for instance, how long uh, should you wait after you get your navel pierced to wear a corset? And uh, I don't personally have a navel piercing, but I, I have a lot of friends who do and they have tattoos and whatnot. And uh, you know, you need to actually have a healing period after you get a tattoo or a piercing before you wear your corset. Actually, one of the things that uh, some people don't know, navel piercings are very popular. 
uh, you know, a lot of people have it. It's not unusual to see. But uh, what some people don't know is it is actually one of the piercings that takes the longest to heal. Uh, a navel piercing can take up to an entire year to heal properly and fully. Uh, that can be even more time than uh, a cartilage piercing. So do keep that in mind if you are a waist trainer or you plan to waist train but you also recently had a navel piercing. How long after a surgery can you wear a corset? That is really something that you need to check with your doctor about. Uh, just because a doctor would recommend some sort of uh, elastic shapewear over your abdomen, say after liposuction or something, doesn't necessarily mean that you can use a corset for the same purposes. So really, better to be safe and sorry and just double check with your doctor. Uh, Lace and Brace uh, in Vancouver had mentioned that uh, some doctors over there had prescribed her Edwardian underbust corset after uh, liposuction surgery to help their patients maintain their figure but I don't know if that is uh, if that means that the doctor recommended the corset after the healing period so that they can maintain their results or if they actually used the corset as post-surgical compression so you know really do your research make sure that the message is totally clear 100% um, and double check with your doctor if anything in the case of other types of surgeries, uh, for instance, you got your appendix out or your gallbladder out or something, and you want to start corseting uh, after that procedure, once again, check with your doctor. Uh, in Especially in situations where you might have had a laparoscopic uh, procedure done, where you have like really tiny incisions, uh, just because it might look like the skin is healed over, it doesn't mean that you're in tip-top shape underneath there. So if you have any uh, swelling in the area, you know, there's there's blood rushing to that area, that is what swelling is, and you don't really want to create a competition for space in that area if you're still healing, or if you have stitches, or if there are any uh, blood vessels that had previously been stitched up, you don't want those to burst or anything. So really just make sure that you're 100% healthy before you start corseting in that situation. And this also applies to those who have just had a baby. So I understand that there are a lot of people out there who want to start waist training right after they've delivered a child, uh, preferably on the same day, some of them have told me. But um, even though belly binding is very popular in uh, certain cultures, I've actually done a video on that before, you do need to check with your doctor about what type of compression is best for you and it also depends on your delivery as well. If you've had any sort of injury or trauma to your pelvic region uh, during delivery, um, you know, if, if it was a difficult birth, you might have a risk of prolapse or something. You might have damage to your pelvic floor muscles. Uh, some people have to have an episiotomy. Uh, you know, you, you really want to make sure that you're healed up before you do that. And I understand that can be frustrating because uh, some women want to take advantage of the hormone relaxin that's still in their system after delivery. Um, but you, you really got to make sure that you check with your doctor before you do anything like that. And especially in the case of C-section, because once again, you are literally cutting into your abdominal wall and you don't want to be putting a corset over that too soon. And as I'm saying these things, it, it seems like such common sense to me, but these are really questions that I have received in the past, questions that I still do receive. And I, I've always had the the environment and this channel where I wanted to encourage people to ask questions and there you know I wanted people to feel that there's no such thing as a stupid question I would rather somebody ask uh, a question that might seem obvious to somebody else but I would rather that they still ask it uh, rather than uh, you know feel ashamed to ask it and then go off and do something potentially injurious or something and if I don't know the answer I'll tell you I don't know because I don't know your medical history. I don't know exactly what's going on, um, and I I I don't know your doctor. I don't know uh, what you've been through in life. So um, that's why it's always good to get a second opinion. And I tell my doctor that I wear corsets, that I make corsets. I I actually told three different doctors <laughs> that I wear corsets because I wanted to make sure that if I was going to do something, I was going to do it properly. I was going to do it as safely as possible. Don't be afraid to ask questions because how else are you going to get answers if you are not asking the right questions? So um, 
yeah, I, I hope you guys uh, at least gleaned a little bit of information out of this video, and I will see you guys whenever I see you. Bye.